You're listening to the AZ Wildcats podcast. I'm your host, Mike Luke, joined by the boss, the great Saul Bookman. Hello, Saul Bookman. How are you? How's, how are you doing, Michael Luke? All right. Well, first of all, Saul, before we get into anything, any cool things going on at PHNX? There's always cool things going on at PHNX. That always, Mike. Always. We got a tea party going on on Saturday. So uh, even if you're not a Suns fan, you should come out, swing the clubs a little bit, play some of our uh, our games for prizes. Uh, we got three-point shootouts. We got putting contests. We got three different um, games on the range. It's uh, really fun. It's interactive. Uh, it's a good time for everybody. Food and drinks will be out there too. So yeah, come Who's have better? fun. Who's better at golf, you or Justin Spears? Uh, it's definitely me. By, by, by a, a good percentage? Oh yeah, by by like leaps and bounds. Would Justin confirm this? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. there we go. All right. Well, from your mouth to God's ears or whatever the term is. All right. Uh, <laughs> we've got a lot to get to this show, though, Saul Bookman. We are going to talk Arizona basketball recruiting, the tournament. We're even going to talk a little Arizona football. But first, Arizona gets a massive commit, obviously, from Joson Sanon. Now, listen, I uh, I generally don't get take off, taken off guard by commits. This one definitely took me off guard. I did not. I'm, I've been uh, scolding somebody behind the scenes on the staff for not telling me about this. But either way, this is a this is a big time get. So, I mean, you played a little uh, basketball yourself. When you see this kid, what do you see? I mean, he's athletic as hell. He's a great wing defender. I think he's six foot five. Mm -hmm. um, got crazy athleticism. He's uh, versatile with either hand. I uh, listen. He's he's and he's also a, a pretty big already for for being a high school kid you see him using the left hand in this uh in this video and listen man the the highlights don't do him justice he's a solid solid player all the way around um he, he's a scorer he's a scorer like that's just right. flat out what he is and so uh the, the u of a getting him is is i mean that's just adding another bucket another player to their bucket i mean listen they they could potentially have four all the way up to seven guys that could be drafted after next year um just based off of their recruiting class and whoever else is going to stay on the roster for another year. So, I mean, a tremendous get by, by Tommy Lloyd. And honestly, Saul, this kid fits in perfectly. You're going into a totally different animal next year, as you know, in the big 12, and there's going to be a ramped up level of physicality and athleticism. You're not going to have games where you're playing Oregon state and Cal and Stanford game in and game out. Although I know that Arizona lost two of those teams, but you put this kid in there with a KJ Lewis on the wing. You've also got a Jamari Phillips coming in as well. You've got obviously the two headed uh, point guard situation and you'll be bringing in some other players as well. This is the kind of player you need to excel in the big 12. And honestly, the kind of guy that usually Kansas has Kentucky has obviously sec, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. A million percent. Listen, <clears throat> the big 12 is a little funky. It's, it's like almost the opposite of big 12 football, a big 12 football is a lot of scoring big 12 basketball. Not so much. It's right. very, uh, it's physical. Uh, it's way more physical than the Pac-12 is. Yes. And, you know, you got some legit teams, obviously, with Houston, Kansas, uh, Baylor, Kansas State, you know, Iowa State. Like, we, right now, if if we were in the conference right now, we would have four of the top ten teams in the country. Right. Um, so it's, it's as good a conference as you're going to come across. It's a little bit more physical than the Pac-12. Um, but I also think that the skill sets are um, at a higher degree overall. Right. As opposed to the Pac-12, where I feel like you you have two or three teams that are at the top and then everybody else is basically bottom feeders. Um, right. So, you know, what's weird about the Big 12, too, is that when you watch it, they all play that slow it down, grind it out. But it doesn't feel like they play that necessarily out of necessity. You watch the Big Ten and it's a bunch of guys that look like me. Whereas when you watch Houston, there's a lot of players, there's athletes. There's not just players that are playing that out of necessity, in my opinion. 
Yeah, I mean, I, Houston's a weird example to me because Houston is so physically imposing yeah. um, from the guard position all the way to the center position, like uh, all the way across the board. They are big dudes. And listen, I was there in San Antonio when we played them in the in the Sweet 16. As soon as they got on the court, I was just like, oh, shit, like right. what? Like that yeah. that's how these guys are are built. Like I felt like we were about to lose this game. Right, right. And sure enough, we did. And so uh when you see a team like Houston, like I feel like they do have to play it's not a fast pace. They have to play at a reasonable pace. Right. Um, because they don't go very deep. They're six or seven guys deep. And that's kind of that's kind of the theme along the Big 12 is that, you know, they're six, seven deep. Uh, Arizona could could really break that mold because you could easily see, in, see U of A going eight or nine deep next year uh, with the talent that they have. All right. Now, I've been asked, is this kid going to start? Yes, most likely he's going to start. He's a top 10 player. And generally, guys that are predicted as being top 15 picks, they generally come in and start. So that is something to uh, certainly keep an eye on. Now, we're going to get back to some recruiting, but let's get down to Arizona on the court. Um, listen, Saul. Uh, you've been watching Arizona. You back the A, uh, Saul yeah. Bookman. Tell people out there. I had somebody ask me if you were a Kansas State or a U of A alum, and I said Saul Bookman is a U of A alum. You claim U of A, Saul Bookman. A million percent, all day, every day. Listen, I went to Kansas State for one year. I enjoyed my time. I I, I am Ema all the way. Uh, but when uh, the rubber meets the road, it's always uh, the red and blue uh, for sure. All right, now you. What what were your opinions then when you saw the West draw that Arizona got? I'm. I mean, how many times have we said this before? It's a great draw. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I listen. I feel like I represent a lot of U of A fans. Where, like, I am optimistic. Uh, I am encouraged by the path that they possibly could have uh, to get to the Final Four. But at the end of the day, you just got to do it, and yeah. they, there is no more excuses. You have one bad night, you're going home. That's point blank how it's going to be. So. I hope, I hope, hope, hope that this team shows up ready to go. The first weekend, I'm not as concerned about, but you know, you never know. I wasn't concerned about Princeton last year. Then we lost, so right. I'm, 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 I'm hopefully optimistic. They got to do it, like Mike. They got to do it at this point. Like this is, it's three years under Tommy, three good teams, um, and you haven't gotten past the Sweet 16. You, you got to get at least to the Elite Eight, if not the Final Four, this year to finally get through that. That hurdle. And let's and let's be honest here. I mean, Tommy Lloyd, obviously, we're very lucky to have him. Very good job by Arizona locking him up, obviously. But e even the uh, the team a couple years before, you didn't really play well against Wright State. You were tied at the half in a 16 versus one. You and I were right there against in the TCU game where it felt like TCU controlled the majority of that game. Arizona won. And then, obviously, you got boat raced by Houston. Then after that, you got Princeton as well. Um Listen, you've got four games there, and for about seven of those eight halves, you haven't played well. This is the next step. And when I found myself looking at brackets, we're going to go over brackets, by the way. Um, but when I found myself looking at brackets, I'm thinking to myself, all right, well, you know, Dayton's one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country. Then I stopped myself and I said, listen, it's still Dayton. At the end of the day, you're still playing Dayton in the second round. I get it. You, I No, I get it. I get it. You've got to be. If you can't beat Dayton in the second round, then we got bigger issues in play. Oh yeah, a million percent. But I I would say this for everybody that freaks out about us losing to a, a 15 seed or, or or an 11 seed or 12 seed, whatever. Um, this isn't the 80s or the 90s anymore. Yeah. Like the parody is distinct now. The parody is starting to swing back the other way as well because of NIL alone. Uh, these smaller conference schools are not going to be able to compete at at the high level that Arizona and the North Carolinas and the Dukes can um money wise so they're limited in that rea in that faction so they're going to lose transfers to the portal and they're going to come to schools like U of A so with that that's what it is but yeah I, I I just they they have a path Dayton's no slouch Dayton's been good for a while that's yeah. the thing that concerns me about Dayton is like Dayton is basically a power five conference school with the recent success that they've had the last half a decade to a decade so i'm not going to sleep on dayton but again if you handle your business if you play defense the way that you are fully capable of you should dog walk these teams you should dog walk every team until you get to north carolina to be honest right exactly i agree with you why wow, you think they should dog walk uh, baylor as well so yeah yeah baylor's trash yeah i actually baylor's think baylor's trash. Lose baylor has no baylor has no business um, playing at the K, uh, at the level that U of A can play, they just have zero zero business doing that. They've got a good defensive squad. Their shooting is leaves a lot to be desired. Some nights they get hot, some nights they don't. They're just very erratic, and that's why Baylor is where they're at. 
Right. I have. Uh, I actually have New Mexico beating Baylor. So again, same. If you, yeah. Oh, do you? That, do. That's called a tease for the Bet MGM. Uh, maybe the Bet MGM <laughs> parlay coming up. By the way, Saul, do you Bet MGM? You got you got some pretty good stuff going on right here. I don't know if you're aware of this. That. Oh, I'm very aware. My All right. Well, here's the deal. Saul is clearly aware of this, but here's the deal. Sign up for BetMGM. Use bonus code PHNX. Place your first BetMGM Sportsbook wager through BetMGM Sportsbook mobile app for at least $10. You'll receive $1,500 in bonus bets if the bet loses. Check out the show notes for details also. Sign up and deposit, again, at least $10 into your BetMGM Sportsbook account. Place your first wager and receive up to 1500 in bonus bets if the bet loses. And now let's listen to Shane with the disclaimer. Bets expire in seven days. One new customer offer only. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Available in the U.S. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY-467-369. New York. Call 1-800-327-5050. Massachusetts. 21 plus only. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP. Arizona. 1-800-BETS off Iowa. 1-800-981-0023. Puerto Rico. First bet offer for new customers only. Subject to eligibility requirements. Bonus bets are non-withdrawable. In partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. See BetMGM.com for terms. U.S. promotional offers not available in New York, Nevada, North Carolina, Ontario, or Puerto Rico. All right, here's my parlay. I got Arizona going to the final four, tease, and then I got UConn going to the final four. I'm going out on a limb there. What do you have, Saul Bookman? What do you have for your parlay? That's not much of a limb. I, I have the same thing. Taking the one uh, and the two seed that are yeah, favored? crazy. I actually have Arizona as the lowest seed that will make the final four as the two. I think all the other regions will have their, their one seeds represented. I think it's also a really interesting thing that if you go in the BetMGM Sportsbook app, Arizona is the only two seed that is favored in the entire, uh, that is favored to come out of their region. I think a lot of people thought it'd be North Carolina, but there's a couple things in place. If you look at North Carolina, their starting lineup, and we had a short ad about this the other day, their, North, their starting lineup kind of mirrors Arizona. R.J. Davis, Caleb Love, kind of the same player. Uh, Armando Baycott, Umar Ballo, leader of men, kind of the same player. But the difference, though, is that Arizona also brings in two nuclear weapons off the bench in K.J. Lewis and Jaden Bradley, and you're going to have a lot of fans there. So those are things that you can't really necessarily account for. No, a million percent. I mean, listen, the, the road is easy. It, it is on paper. It is easy. So again, it's just not, it's just, you gotta be, you gotta be better about your recent history in the tournament and you gotta play at a high level. And North Carolina is a solid team. Like if, listen, that, that's, a, that's a toss up game. It's a toss up sure. game. You feel like you have a slight edge um, and you're really kind of banking on Caleb Love having a, an ultimate revenge game. And if you don't think he wouldn't be excited or hyped up about playing North Carolina in the elite eight with an opportunity to go to the final four and, and bouncing them. Oh man, you are out of your mind. I know he would be hyped up for that matchup. All right. I look at look at North Carolina. I'm kind of bummed if them if I'm them because I think I got a more difficult draw than Arizona to get to Arizona. First of all, I, there's nothing that I enjoy making more fun of than uh, the Big Ten. But Michigan State in the second round is a tough thing because Tourney Izzo is a thing, even when they're not playing well. And we watched that team earlier in the year. That's a talented team. I'm not exactly sure why they aren't better. I don't love that matchup if I'm North Carolina, Saul Bookman. Yeah, no, I, I I do not disagree. We had problems with them as well in in um, uh, Palm Springs um, and, and their physical team. They gave us problems. We were on the ropes there for a little bit until we pulled away late. Uh, they're 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 a tough tough team, and you know how Izzo's teams are in the tournament. So uh, that's not a layup for sure. Right. Oh, we got a super snap coming in. They're coming in hot and heavy. H Fuchs 451. Shout out to merely Mike Luke. Good meeting you in cheer in Vegas. We'll get you a drink in LA. I will take that. That would mean that we are in LA. Thank you for the, uh, thank you for the kind words. All right. Now, um, Saul Long Beach state. want to get back to that. And then we're going to start looking at our bracket. Here's where I stand on this. I've actually watched Long Beach state two times this year. This too, too many times, but <laughs> listen, there's something that to be said for actually, you know, winning your conference tournament, getting hot, your coach is going to be out. But again, this is not. This is a team that's twenty and fourteen. They are firing their coach for a reason at Long Beach State. No excuses with this game. You're a twenty point victor. This can't. I don't want this to be a three point game where you're like survive and advance. No, none of that. You need to beat the brakes off of them. Uh, yes, a amen. And I know everybody's like, oh well, you know how how come we always manage to to play these guys where you know they have this unbelievable story it's a sad story you know somebody had said like the mascot has cancer and the coach's wife passed away earlier there's like right. like all these stories <laughs> mascot has cancer every, every team 
every team has stories like this, right? right. Every team has something that they've battled through uh, to some degree, uh, especially if you're one of those, you know, up and coming teams. And Long Beach State, obviously, with Dan Munson, we we've gone on and on about it. I've heard your show earlier uh, this week. Obviously, we know his history at NAU, Gonzaga, and Long Beach State. But I I. I don't give two shits about it. We should dog walk them. We should put them, yeah, let's, let's send them to retirement early. Let's just not have to worry about that anymore. Maybe he could go to ASU in a couple years after he gets, you know, the batteries flowing a little bit, uh, the charges. By the way, I got an off topic. I got an off topic rant that I just wanted to start real quick. And then we're going to get back to real basketball. I have done a 180 on Bobby Hurley. I believe that Bobby Hurley is good for ASU basketball because there's no NIL there. And it's bad. It's it's there's no NIL. Not only is there no NIL, there's uh you got an athletic director that isn't even there. You got a president that doesn't necessarily care about sports. And on top of that, who are you really going to get to take that job, especially going into the buzzsaw that is the Big 12? Saul, I see you disagreeing. I don't know if I disagree. Um, I don't think Bobby Hurley is I, I, listen, there's got to be something to the fact that they have so many transfers year in, year out. It's not just NIL. It has to be relationship-based. It has to be what the environment that is created there, like what is going on? Because the fact that they they have like 50, 60, 70, 80% turnover year after year, like that's incredible. Like right. you're not a, you're not a mid-major, you know, like why are you losing so many dudes Right. to the portal and yeah the nil problem is a real problem and they they have been resistant to it for the last you know half a decade um and then when everything kind of came to fruition two years ago <clears throat> they were wildly unprepared unlike other schools so i don't know if the, you know you could put that you, you you don't have to put that on bobby bobby has the opportunity though to do just as much listen you saw what happened with football mm -hmm. and you saw when jed fish left what that that emotional toll was on the team right. and the boosters more importantly around it. And you saw guys step up to the plate, offer some more money for these kids to stay here. Like you can be that, that advocate. You could be that, that kind of lightning rod for raising NIL money. And Bobby Hurley just doesn't do that. I don't care if you don't have an athletic director as a head coach, you could figure it out too. Would you, if you were an up and coming head coach, would you want that job or would you wait for something else? No, I wouldn't want that job. No, I mean, that's I would, especially I would, going would, into the Big Twelve. That's a no, buzzsaw. Would, listen, man, you can't walk into that. You can't walk into that arena and think that it's a legit top, top, you know, tier right. facility. Like I had a better facility at Marcos Denisa High School than these dudes have in that right now, man. It's ridiculous. When you were like, making, when you were setting free throw records, shut up, Mike. <laughs> yes um yeah it's it's not it's not it's not great it's not ideal at all like that's a that's a very bottom tier. Uh, facility that they have over there, man. It's embarrassing. All right. Now let's get back to, well, let's get back to some real basketball then. I believe, and I've said this for a while now, I believe that Arizona has the second highest upside in the country. I think UConn, UConn is just kind of on another level. I would certainly back the A against UConn. UConn is obviously really, really good. I'm going to pick Arizona to beat UConn. But I believe that Arizona checks off all the boxes. And there's very few teams that check off all the boxes. You got the big man up front, Umar Ballo, who I know some people, you know, hate on him, whatever. I'll take a dude that's going to give me 16 and 10 every single game. Keyshaw Johnson, as long as he's energized, he's good. Pella Larson, kind of the jack of all trades. Then you got Caleb Love. I'm a huge Caleb Love fan. I know he's kind of a lightning rod down here for whatever reason. I'll take him all day. And then obviously Boswell hasn't played great this season, but between him and Bradley, you should be able to get a some kind of contribution. And then you got a pretty good bench. I think it checks off pretty much every box, Saul. I agree. Like they do have the most potential, but they also have a, a scary floor. Right. And that scary floor we've seen a couple times in the last couple of weeks. You know, we saw it just last week in the Pac-12 tournament. Like, that's the thing that scares most of us about what this team is all about. Like, there's no reason why they should ever lose to a team like Oregon. They dog walked them twice. Like, how, how are you losing to a team like that, right? right. But at the same time, listen, they're kids. They're going to be inconsistent. They've been consistent more than they've been inconsistent this year. They've only been inconsistent seven times. Let's just say it like that. Yeah. And so um, I think if they put it together, they have they could win the national championship. I don't think anybody disputes that. They can win a national championship. They can get to the final four. Um, but they could also lose in the first or second round. Like we that's <laughs> they're 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 uh you there's know, a wide there is, is a wide. Grand Canyon type gap into what they could do. 
Now, yeah. let me ask you this. Speaking of the Grand Canyon, Saul, when was the last time you went to Circle K? Uh, yesterday? <laughs> why Why the Grand Canyon? Yeah, well, yeah what does that have to do? The... What's that? What does that have to do with the Grand Canyon? You're about to find out. I put that out there not for a random reason. A person tweeted at me going to the Grand Canyon last week and said that he stopped by and he tagged Circle K in it and he said, back the K. So this is not just one person that has done this. It is a movement. The inner circle is a thing, Saul Bookman. You know this. Oh, a million percent. And you're, so, in my, and, you're in my inner circle there, Mike. Thank you. And you get 10%. You get 10, uh, at least here in Tucson, you get 10 uh, cents off. Join inner circle for free, like my friend Back the K movement. Well, by downloading the Circle K app, terms and conditions apply at participating locations. Visit circlek.com for details. What's if that? If you sign like? up for the for the, for the the inner circle app, you get your first five Phillips at 25 cents off. And then after that, it's three cents. And then you get moved up to like this upper tier status after like four or five fill ups um, to five cents off. But I got an I got a different one for you there, Mike. Okay. Sure. If you sign up for their their debit card, right? Their Circle K debit card. Now it's not, it's like a debit card that's basically linked to your own checking account. Mm -hmm. If you use that um for the for 60 days or a hundred gallons worth of gas, you save 30 cents a gallon. Ooh. And on top of that, every time you use that debit card, you save 10 cents no matter what. So there's wow. plenty of ways to save if you're in the inner circle. If you're in the inner, but you got to get to the inner circle. That is the key. Yeah. You got to get to the inner circle. If you're in the inner circle and the Grand Canyon, Jacob Franklin, I heard you in the background talking a lot of mess about me. I do not like that. By the way, real quick, and then we're going to get back to basketball. I got to give Jacob Franklin the biggest shout outs in the world. Jacob Franklin admitted to me today because he generally gets texts from me by Jacob. What time did I text you uh, yesterday? Yesterday, it was like 6.30. All right, 6.30 going over the show, show prep. Jacob Franklin is the man. Jacob Franklin, he said he gets more text messages from me than his wife. Jacob Franklin, salute emoji, back the J. Appreciate you, dude. You're welcome. Just doing my job. <laughs> All right, well, on that note. All right, now let's get back to Saul. Do you have your brackets available? Who do you have? Uh, let's do a little bit of bracket talk. Let's say you. I'll, yeah, let's you do it. Let's your do phone, it. I'll pull out mine. Okay. Yeah. All right. Here's again. This is you're going to want to go to the BetMGM sportsbook app. These picks are gold. All right. Now, or you can, or you can join the pool uh, that we have uh, at PHNX Sports as well. If you just go to the PHNX Sports Twitter feed, you will see the the free pool that you can enter and win prizes. So why not just do both? You can do both. A million All percent. Right. You can do both. All right. I want to make fun of. Uh, I got. I got one wacky region that I want to start with. Let's start in the Midwest uh, because again. I, uh, I'm going with my heart, but, uh, per how far do you have Purdue going, Saul? Uh, I have Purdue going all the way to the final four. I have Purdue getting knocked out in the second round of TCU. <laughs> I am going to speak this into existence, Saul. Come on now. No, I do. I do. They're, they're not, they're, they're not losing. They're not losing before they get to the sweet 16. Did you know that in the last three years, they've lost to a 12, a 14 and a 15. I get that, but that's not happening this year. All right, all right. But again, I'm taking TCU over them. Also, Gonzaga McNeese State. This is an interesting match. A lot of people picking McNeese State. Is Saul Bookman one of those people? I am one of those people. McNeese State I, is solid. By the way, Will Wade, the, Will Wade's uh his like entire placard should say, I'm gonna cheat, I'm gonna win, and guess what? You're gonna love me. He has done an amazing job here. He did an amazing job at LSU. If he could just be, I would hire him back in a second because now you're allowed to cheat. So, I mean, he's done an amazing job. I got McNeese State actually going to, uh, well, probably a little too far. Um, Kansas Samford. I'm in on the Samford train after McCuller was announced out. Uh, yes. Are you Likewise. as well? I have Samford as well. I have Samford with the upset. Yeah, Kansas is, has it's been a yeah. while since Kansas has been upset. They need to feel that pain. They do. Yeah, exactly. And uh is that some of your Manhattan Kansas uh, love coming in kicking in there as well? Uh no. All right, fair enough. No. Oregon. I got Oregon beating South Carolina. Uh I have Oregon beating South Carolina as well. I'm trying to find my my bracket. I don't know what happened. All right, well here. you well you look, I'll talk. And then we got, I got Creighton beating Akron, but then I got Oregon beating Creighton as well. I got Creighton making, or Oregon making some moves. Colorado State, I got them beating uh, Texas as well. By the way, Mountain West love. 
A lot of people are wondering if it's really good or not. I think the Mountain West is going to acquit itself very, very well in this NCAA tournament, Saul Bookman. What's that? Okay. Here? All right. I, I like that. I like that. Yeah, I, I don't uh, – what, what, what side of the bracket are we in right now? Okay, we're on the – we're in the Midwest. Midwest. Okay. So uh, I do have Creighton. I have it, Creighton over Akron. I have – I do actually have Colorado State upsetting Texas. Yeah, there you go. Um, and then I have Tennessee basically – I have Tennessee getting all the way to the Elite Eight. Um, and I have them facing Purdue. That would be good for our friends at DNVR, Colorado State advancing. This is correct. Yeah. Very cool. All right. By the way, they got a cool coach, Nico Medved. I've actually met this guy twice. I shook his hand once. Get a load of this, though, Saul. He remembered me the second time that I came up and shook his hand, and there was like a there was like an 11-month gap there. He didn't remember That's... my name, but he remembered me, so I'm going to take that. <laughs> that means a lot for me. Now, Tennessee, Colorado State. I got Tennessee playing, uh, winning that game. Then I got them playing Oregon, and I have Oregon beating Tennessee, Salt Bookman. No, not a chance. No chance? No. Tennessee's way too good. From the perimeter, defensively, they, they've got too much length. Oregon, the thing that Oregon struggles with is lengthy guards. Hmm. And Arizona doesn't really have a lot of lengthy guards. Right. Tennessee sure does. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. My bracket, not yours. And we've got Mc... <laughs> We've got, all right, then I've got in the sweets. Keep in mind, this is my only wacky bracket. I'm not the guy that just chooses upsets the whole time, but I wanted to start with this because it's more in line with who I am. And then, so I have on the top there, I have McNeese making, I have McNeese then beating TCU and oh then making God. it to, uh, making it to the round of, where is this? Uh, 32, six. I have McNeese making the elite eight, Saul. How stupid is that? Wow. Uh, that, that is pretty stupid. Yeah. All right. Yeah, like I said, is, this is my only wacky one. All right. What do you have? Is what do you have in the Elite Eight out of that region? Let's let's cut to the uh, let's cut to the chase. The Elite Eight, I have uh, Purdue, Tennessee. All right. Well, I got a little bit of a different one. Um, do you want to hear it? Yeah, let's hear it. I got McNeese against Oregon. Oh my god. <laughs> I got, but again, I'm either oh gonna god. I'll most likely be the dumbest person out there, which is generally the case. But if it's not. You will not hear the end of this. You know what it's going to be like? The Miami Heat from a couple years ago when I kept telling you they were going to go to the uh, uh, NBA Finals and you said there's no chance. Yeah, that was a fluke. You also said, hey, get a load of this. Saul Bookman has always been a man of his word except this one time. Saul <laughs> Bookman told me that I could come on one of the post-game shows if uh, uh, the Heat made it and you didn't let it. You were nicked on your word, Saul Bookman. Uh, yeah, because you wanted to come on the night that the Suns got like eliminated or something like that. I was like, that bro, is, that's not happening right now. I would have not allowed that either. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now let's get to the bracket that everybody cares about the West, uh, with right, Arizona. How far do you got North? How, how far do you have North Carolina going, Saul? I got North Carolina and Arizona going to the elite eight. Yep. All right. We can just cut through most. But of I do have, but I do have, I do have some, uh, some upsets. What do you got? I have Grand Canyon getting all the way to Sweet 16. Ooh, I like it. Yeah, I have them beating St. Mary's and then beating Alabama. Um, I have New Mexico uh, beating Clemson. Listen, Jalen House. Love Jalen score. House. He can score. He did. Former Shadow Mountain product up here. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you know so there's, you they have another guy on uh, St. or excuse me, a uh, Grand Canyon that was really good before he got a bunch of injuries. Jovan Blackshear as well. Yeah. Ooh, Blackshear's good. Blackshear I really good. like Blackshear. You know, you could um, take a team of ends. You could take a team of uh, ASU transfers. And former be, ASU transfers. Yeah, they'd be an elite eight team. That's how sad it is. You'd have uh, you'd have uh, uh, Jalen House, DJ Horn, um, uh, Warren. Wall. You'd have to go a little big. Warren Washington, Jovan Bla or not Jovan Blackshear didn't go there. And my guy Duke Brennan. Duke Brennan. Yeah. Duke Brennan starting at Grand Canyon, making moves. By the way, a guy asked me this. If Grand Canyon got big enough, would you ever consider a Grand Canyon beat at PHNX? Yeah, million percent. Yeah, all right, all right. So there's a person in the high or that always asks about that. There you go. Um, I got New Mexico, though, making the Sweet 16. I'm a, Like I said, I'm a big fan of the Mountain West. Okay. How yeah. far do you have them going? I have New Mexico getting bounced by Baylor. Okay. Well, all right. I guess that'll be an interesting one to follow. Then we got St. Mary's. How far do you have St. Mary's going, Saul? I just told you Grand Canyon and I have all the way to the Sweet 16, and they got to oh, play Grand cool. Canyon in the first round. And I told you that they're going to upset Alabama as well. So don't ask me how far do I have Alabama going because Alabama's getting to the second round, and that's as far as they're getting. Can I run it by you again? <laughs> just one more time? Sure, sure. 
And that's another point. People keep asking Randy Bennett to ASU. Why would Randy Bennett take that ASU job? Randy Bennett's got a cook in at St. Mary. Oh, yeah. He's he's got a good cushy gig, man. Why would he leave? All right. So I got Arizona, North Carolina, and I got Arizona winning this one. I got Arizona. I'm back in the A. I got Arizona coming out of the West. Yeah, same. So do I. Right. By the way, there is a huge Duke Brennan movement here in Tucson. By the way, Duke Brennan, future Wildcat. I would not be opposed at all. Dylan, Dylan Anderson and Duke Brennan signed me up for two. All right, now let's get to the uh, let's get to the other side. All right, UConn. Um, like I said, all right, UConn to me is you watch UConn game in and game out. They're they're just relentless. I mean, they're they're really really tough. Uh, I like I like Bobby or uh, Danny Hurley. Danny Hurley and Bobby Hurley strike me as Bob Stoops and Mike Stoops, and that <laughs> they're both like like you could tell they both came up around basketball, but one kind of got all of the, the coaching acumen while the other one didn't quite get it either yeah. way. I got, I got UConn. I got UConn rolling to the elite eight. Yeah. I have UConn rolling to the elite eight. The only hiccup that could possibly come for UConn to me is Auburn. Mm. Auburn can score. Auburn is a pretty athletic team. I watched them in the SEC uh, title game. Uh, they, they've they've got a squad, man. If they put it if they put it together in one game, they could easily pull the upset against UConn. But UConn's just solid on both ends of the ball. Um, yeah. They've actually increased their tempo this year versus last year a little bit more. So, I mean, they're they're the team to beat in this tournament right now for sure. They certainly are. And there again, we talked about how Arizona checks off all the boxes. UConn checks off all the boxes times two. And yes. that they're big, they're fast, they're athletic, they're littered with NBA players. And I like Hurley. Hurley, talk about a really, really good hire, uh, Danny Hurley was. Um, now, uh, let's see here. On the bottom half, do you have any wa love for Washington State against Drake and uh, possibly advancing past Iowa State? I can see you picking Washington State to beat Iowa State. So I, I, That was the toughest pick of my entire 64-team bracket. Um, wow. I just... I wanted to pick Washington State over Iowa State. I really, really did, but I didn't. I oh, picked Iowa on, State dude. because Iowa State's legit, dude. They're, They're really so good. good. They're so good. But ironically enough, I do have them losing in the next round. So, <laughs> yeah, no, I got it. No, Iowa State's really good. They're they're kind of the embodiment too of the Big Twelve. That they're a team you just forget about. I mean, you you think about Baylor, you think about Kansas, you think about TCU upsetting Purdue. And then you forget about Iowa State that, oh, by the way, they just smoked Houston. So, I mean, they're kind of a team that you forget about. I have in the Elite Eight, I have UConn and Iowa State. Let's say you, Saul. Uh, in the Elite Eight, I have UConn and Illinois. Ooh, you're, dude, there's so much Big Ten love from Saul Bookman in the, on this show. You know, they're due. They're due. Are they? They're due. Illinois is good, dude. Yeah. All right. So you've got, all right, you got Illinois make the case for Illinois. Besides the fact that Brad Underwood is a great name. I mean, again, if you're looking at Illinois as a team that can get far, you look at the three different levels. Okay. Transition offense, defense to me, that those are the three things that are going to lead you to victory. They've, they, they can do all of it. They have great right. wing play. Uh, they have, they don't really, they're a little bit, they lack size up front. Uh, they don't they don't have like that big seven foot dominator, but they do have some big dudes that can that can ball down low. So, right. again, I just think Illinois is a solid program. Um, I've watched them off and on because Eddie Johnson loves them here at PHNX. So, that makes you know, sense. That makes I've, sense. I've kind of, you know, I've kind of kept my eye on them from time to time and I've they're a good team. Right now, if you were let's say you couldn't make the game and you're figuring out a place that you'd like to go watch it. Can you think of a better place in the Gila River resorts and casinos? I cannot. And the cool thing about it, too, is you do you because it's an immersive experience at this. Uh, you can visit play at Hilo.com for more details. Saul Bookman, you've been there many times. I love the little blue wave. I think that is the coolest little casino emblem they have. You can see it from I-10. I always take a picture and then post it. What say you about Gila River Resorts and Casinos? It's fantastic. It's such a nice, clean facility. It's a high-end like they got great deals that go on upstairs in the sports book. They have good food deals at all the restaurants that they have. It's just a nice way to get away. So this is the place that you go in there and you get a nice dinner and a nice drink. And you say, I deserve this. This is exactly what happens at the Gila river resorts and casinos. Check it out again. You will thank me later. Now let's get back to our brackets and then we will get back to some more reads, but for all right. Now, we got the Houston region. This is where it gets fascinating. Now, again, I'm not talking wacky like picking McNeese State against Oregon in the Elite Eight. But, all right, Houston, 
What are your thoughts on Houston, Saul? They're solid. Yeah. They're solid from top to bottom. I mean, they got great guard play. Um, they've got they're one of the best defensive teams in the country. Um, you know, like LJ Cryer is their leading scorer, but if you look at their stats from top to bottom, their leading scorer only averages 15 a game. Right. Um, and then when they go to like seven or eight, they average like eight or nine points a game. Right. So they spread out their their scoring a, a lot. They can go through dry spells. And if you didn't get a chance to watch them play the other day against, uh, I believe it was TCU, mm-hmm. uh, they got out to like a 14-2 start. Um, and then that score stayed that way for about 10 minutes of game time. It was right. crazy. So Houston can go through those little spells where they don't score a lot of points. It's happened at various other times in, in the season, but they're so elite defensively that they just they speed you up. And they make you play too fast for your own good. And that's why, to me, Houston's going to the Final Four. Oh, interesting. Interesting. All right. We're def- definitely going to uh, disagree on that one. I like Houston a Ooh. lot, though. I also like Kelvin Sampson a lot. Uh, I think Kelvin Sampson is about as good a coach Great as coach. in college basketball. Great coach. Listen, you win at Washington State. That's uh, that's really all I need. And here's the other thing. Somebody tweeted at me the other day. This is a very silly remark. He said, Mike, you always bash Virginia basketball. I do. And then he said, what about Houston? No, here's the thing. Houston at least tries to score. I believe that Virginia doesn't try to score. I believe that they try to keep games in the negative. That game last night was a monstrosity, 40 points. And they were talking about how Tony Bennett talked about how he wanted to pick up the pace in the postseason. Well, that's picking up the pace. You're proving my point. To me, they're totally different. One is Iowa football, and I can't watch it. Yeah, it's terrible. That's that's an on-point tweet right there. It is the version of Iowa football. Virginia yeah. basketball bores me to death. I've I've never watched a single game of Virginia basketball outside of Good. when they were about to get upset by the 16. Uh, I forgot who that 16 was. Uh, yeah, it was a 16. It was uh, Oakland. Who was the 16? I, I can't even It went remember. viral, too. Yeah. But uh, no, anyway. It was disgusting. Yeah. And then uh, – and then in the final four, that's the only time I've ever watched Virginia because they bore me to death. I can't watch it, and I don't know how they recruit to that style, but some oh, oh yeah, University of Maryland, Baltimore County, duh, Saul. Oh yeah, on. UMBC, yeah, the but, Terriers or something like that, right? The yeah, dogs? I think they are. I've actually the retrievers, that. the retrievers. Yeah, there you go. Oh look at look at Jacob Franklin. The boss comes in, and then Jacob Franklin starts chiming in from time <laughs> to time. Generally, Jacob hides from the crowd. <laughs> hey, you want to know something, Saul? I can always get Jacob to respond if I ask him a Diamondbacks question. I messaged him last night and I said, hey, give me your all-time Diamondbacks rotation. Dude, I had like four paragraphs within like five seconds. It was fantastic. <laughs> You'll get hilarious. more of those. Okay. Now, here's we got to talk about the real team in this bracket, Mike. We got to hurry up and get to that team. Who, who, who do you think that the, who do you think is the real deal in this whole bracket? Hmm. The one team that I think could just screw up everybody's bracket. James Madison? Hells yeah. I figured you'd go, go James Madison. I know what the boss is thinking. Make the 31 and 3, Madison. baby. Patrick Lee champions. Let's right. go. Dude, and I got them, uh, I got them winning that uh, I got them winning the first game, and then I got them uh, losing to Duke. You have them beating Duke, Saul. I do not. <laughs> Dude, you've got winning one game. Come on, man. Yeah, I mean, but still, like they do have the listen, they do have the potential. To get all the way to the Elite Eight. They are I, that good. That just, was just such a letdown. Come on, I know, boss. I know, I know. Listen, they're, they're a good team. Terrence Edwards leads them in scoring at like 17 points a game. Like, again, one through eight, there's not a lot, of, there's not a significant gap between one and eight in terms of scoring. I agree. Like, you know, so like they're a solid team from top to bottom. Like, I, if, if I wanted to pick a team to upset their way all the way to the Elite Eight, if not Final Four, that would be the team that I'm picking. You know who you should pick instead of that team? The team we've already gone over, McNeese State. Yeah, yeah, you, you could pick me, McNeese State. You're like, you could pick him, but I'm not. Um, yeah, I don't. Let me see if, how far I had them going in my bracket, too. Let's oh, see, McNeese State. Maybe you at least have them beating Gonzaga. Uh, I do. Wait, you're in the South? That's not the South. No, I am in the South. That's in the no. Midwest. I, yeah, but I thought you were talking about McNeese State. Oh, yeah, yeah. I have them beating Gonzaga. I have them losing to Kansas, though. Oh, oh dude. We... Sorry. All right, whatever. Um, all right, I've got. Let's talk about. Uh, let's talk about the bottom part of this region for a second. Marquette. I've been debating with people about this for a long time. Let me ask you this: Is Texas a good job for basketball? Because Shaka Smart can clearly coach. He's. I mean, at VCU, he's really good. At Marquette, he's got number two seeds. People don't win at Texas. Rick Barnes, good coach too. People just don't generally win at Texas. <sighs> okay. 
this is the thing. I, I have a theory about good basketball coaches um, that struggle in big city schools. Okay. Mm -hmm. Austin is a big city. Austin is a fun city. Mm -hmm. Austin is very, very hard to keep your, your, uh, your talent away from the bar scene right. uh, and the parties and all that stuff. Right. So right. if you're not adept at, at making sure that you're holding people accountable, um, that shit, Every now and then you're just going out and making sure that you guys aren't acting stupid. Um, if you don't do those kind of things, you're going to struggle. Now, do you have those same problems in Milwaukee at Marquette? No, no. Not what even about Virginia bit. Commonwealth? Don't underestimate that party scene. <sighs> okay. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. But it still does feel like a place that you should be able to win. Texas A&M, like, somewhat similar. In like Bobby, Bobby Hurley is a great example. Had a pretty good run at Buffalo. He mm -hmm. comes to a big city. Can't do it. Right. But would you say that Texas basketball is kind of like TC or not TC football, a uh, Texas A&M football that you got all the amenities. It feels like you should be good and you're just not. I mean, Jimbo Fisher fell flat on his face after winning a national title in Florida state. Yes. Yeah. I yes. just don't get it. All right. Well, I'm glad we partially agree. All right. Now, uh, let's get back to Marquette. I got Marquette, uh, playing, uh, I got Marquette advancing to the sweet 16 to play Kentucky. What say you Saul Bookman? Uh, I think Kentucky is wildly overrated. I do too. Uh, I have NC state beating Kentucky in the second, second round. Is that um, DJ, DJ horn? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. I have Horn's? NC state beating Kentucky and, and playing Marquette. I have Marquette going to the elite eight. Hey, guess who else has Kentucky or Marquette going to the elite eight? This you? guy. Yeah. But you don't have Houston going to the elite eight. I do not. I have? actually hope that you're right on this, though, because I never win any brackets. I go into it expecting to lose money. So Marquette, though, I have Marquette and Duke in the Elite Eight. Okay, so you have Duke. You're high, you're high on Duke. I think Duke is a fluke. You think Duke sucks? Yeah, Duke is uh, trash. Where do you have when, Duke? You, when you get them away from Cameron Indoor, they're just, meh. Are you a uh, are you a fan of Shire? You think Shire's the right guy for the job? Yeah, yeah. he's fine. He'll, right. he'll, he'll, he'll keep him afloat. Right. Well, I'm but how long will they allow him to just be like good, but not great? Right. And I think after next year, you're going to find out because when you have Cooper flag coming into town and he's going to be the most, you know, highly visible recruit in it's the country good. coming to your program. And if you flail out and you don't play as well with a talent like that on paper, right. um, you're, that's when your job's on the line. Dude, you got Keith Van Horn coming to town, man. Come on. All right. Now. So who do you have? You have Houston coming out of this region, correct? Yeah, I have Houston coming out of this region. Also, like you want to talk about the most boring um, Elite Eight matchup ever? Yeah, Marquette versus Houston. Oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to watch that at all. But that's the game I have going. And here the Cougars going to the Elite Eight, or to the Final Four. Is there any chance that you would be watching that at the Gila River Resorts and Casinos? Uh, actually, there is. It's a pretty good chance because we have a pretty cool thing going on over at Gila River Resorts and Casinos. Uh, listen. I'm going to go ahead and jump the gun, but I want to let everybody know whether U of A makes it or not, doesn't matter. Does not matter because I'm going to take care of you guys. You guys can come out to Gila River Resorts and Casinos. You can hang out with your boy. Maybe even we can get Mike up here to watch the final four. Um, but the cool thing about this is, is that we are doing something really cool with Gila River where they're launching the collective by Mike Bibby. So Bibby will be there in-house with his whole shoe collection we've redesigned the whole the whole outfit right there at the top golf scene at gila river uh mike bibby's going to be there he'll sign some autographs he'll talk to people um you'll be able to watch the final four going on like it's going to be a, a a pretty dope scene uh we've got some suns players that are probably going to come out as well like it's it's going to be pretty epic so uh we should have a finalized word on that by to the end of today so keep your eye on that Fair to say that Mike Bibby's probably one of the 25 best uh, college, uh, college, high school pro athletes to come out of Arizona. Oh, yeah. 25? Yeah. I'm just, that was just a little bit of My a 25. That was a little ridiculous. bit of a figure, our good friend Craig Morgan. Why? Oh, because he didn't think that Mike Bibby was one of the top 25. Yeah, in all fairness, Craig is the Craig's the Craig's the goat. That was an oversight. I get it. But that was the first thing I looked at when but, I looked but at But also, him. like, like all the people that voted in that thing. Most of them were up here. So you had like these bum ass sun devils that were on that list that have no business being in that fucking list at all. Right. Mike Bibby. I never saw Sean Elliott. Mike Bibby's the best player I've ever seen at the U of A. I mean, that's and and in high school, it was insane. I went to when he played South Point. Kid you not. 
11 year old Mike Luke. There was a line all the way down Mountain um, to get into the game. It was Is this whole, the Will Porter led? It's South the Will Point? Porter led team. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. This I, is I the, played against that team. Yeah, I played against that South Point Talk team my junior year. We, could we, we just we just beat Richard Jefferson and his Moon Valley uh, crazies. Mm -hmm. uh, Richard Jefferson hit one three in that game, and it was to send it to overtime against us. And that was the only shot he hit the whole game, and he's just talking the whole time. I'm like, right. dude, shut the fuck up. You didn't do anything all game. We ended up winning by 10 in overtime. Uh, but, like, yeah, then the next game we had to play Sal Point, and Sal Point was, like, unbelievable their their front court had like three guys that were all over like 610 uh yeah. then you had will porter and then you had your homie that played uh john ash john ash the other guard on that team as well like they had a solid squad yeah. oh i'm telling you brian peabody i, I get i hang out with peabody a lot we always talk about that you had six 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 seven and six ten across the board all big white guys all lumberers but good which is which is crazy because and i'm sorry folks we're getting off on a little bit of tangent but sure, i do, we like do that this. every show listen uh which which is crazy that they lost to Mike Bibby in the semifinals because Bibby ended up playing Mountain View and Mountain View was the number one team in the country right. at that time. Mountain View was running teams out of the gym. They beat our varsity team the year prior by like 78 points. Like they were ridiculous ridiculous right i didn't play on that team i was we gonna say you weren't on that team points. uh but yeah they, they were awesome so i was really looking forward to south point versus mountain view but that never happened so right. um but that would have been awesome so here's what i did though i snuck into the game and everybody was there like the whole u of a team was there everybody so i just snuck in there just pretending like i was eh, i don't know where i'm really going just kind of this kid and then before long i was literally right up to the front of the line so i basically pretended to be stupid or i was just being stupid and i got into <laughs> the game it was wild for a tucson scene it was like something you saw at hoop dreams where like you know like the entire thing was packed to watch william gates or something very good memories very good memories. Oh, that's hilarious also salt so when was the last time you went to illegal pete's because they have very good food very scrumptious tasty items there last time i went to illegal pete's was when uh, we invited everybody over for this takeover here at asu and i got to sit with about 20 wildcat fans and watch this cheer on the the cats oh by the way we're gonna get to lamont long in here in a second i actually had him in my notes believe it or not lamont long was awesome but illegal pete's is here to bring you a win with their legendary sound check deal bring in your ticket stub from any ticketed event and get a draft beer or a house margarita for a penny illegal pete's wants to celebrate with you whether it's a pre-game or post-game party saul bookman may be there they got you covered for all your game day needs must purchase an adult entree to redeem illegal Pete sound check deal illegal Pete's your go-to spot for burritos buddies and beer and again March Madness is here join the PHNX and illegal Pete's bracket challenge for free prizes for the top three include diehard memberships shirt gift cards to the PHNX locker and illegal Pete's check out the socials and it could further your relationship with Saul Bookman this is true yeah, this is true. Also, uh, I want to push back a little bit. Somebody said the the, the Lamont Long talk, right? Corona del Sol went to the finals after beating Sal Point in the semis in 96. I don't believe it was 96. I Because I thought Lamont Long won a championship. I thought it was like 94, 95. And then Mountain View won it 95, 96. And then, uh, oh, actually, no, 93, 94, 94, 95. And then Bibby won it 95, 96. And then um, Carl Hayden won at 96, 97, which is the year that I lost. I always told I won. I was able to talk with Lute Olson three times in my life. One of the times I talked to him, I asked him, I said, why did you not recruit Lamont Long? He was good. He's right. He's right. No, he's right. My bad. They beat Sal Point, but then they lost to Bibby in the, in the state championship. And I was there for that game. And that was wild. It mm -hmm. was packed. Um, the lines were out the crazy door. I like because Lamont Long versus Mike Bibby were like the two best players in yeah. the city. Lamont Long, Lamont dropped Long like was 45, awesome. 45 on our head like five times while I was there at, at, at Marcos, and like he made it look so damn easy. Right. I, I still to this day I would look up and we look at the stat sheet after the game. And they're like, yeah, Lamont had thirty eight. I'm like, dude, I don't even remember him scoring. He was just so damn good. Do you happen to remember the second best player on Shadow Mountain? He also went. He went to Oregon State. Uh, uh, Alex Morga. Not the name. Oh, who was it? Oh, oh, who Come was on. it? Come on, Saul. Oh, Saul, man. you're the boss. We expect all answers from you. Come on. Oh, I'm trying to forget. I've, uh, I can't Nick remember. Green. Nick Green. Yep, Nick yes. Green. Yes. 
Nick yeah, Green. He, he and Bibby were homies. Yeah, I know, man. Seriously. Damn it. How did I forget that? Yeah. Oh, come on, man. That's not good. All right. Now, I'd like to circle back around. We got to talk about uh, Son in a little bit before we uh, sign off here. But here's the deal, Saul. Everybody that keeps talking about or back in the day stomping on Arizona's grave saying <laughs> poverty school broke all of that. Well, guess what? You just got another five star elite level player coming in. You're going to add to a class. He's going to reclassify. You're bringing in the top 10 player in the class and he is probably a one and done. Tommy Lloyd is locked up long term. Um, save your tears because they are needed <laughs> elsewhere. Yeah, for sure. Listen, man, I, I just, I will never get, I will never understand people talking trash when their schools haven't accomplished anything. Right. Uh, so I don't really pay attention too much to that. This team is already stacked for next year. Now, again, as U of A fans, um, it's great that we keep getting these high, high recruits, but we can all agree we need to cross the, cross the finish line soon. Yes. Soon. Yes. You know, that, and that was the demise of Sean Miller. If you remember, like, you know, we got to the elite eight, uh, with, in, which kind of felt a little fluky that we got to the elite eight. Um, and, and then we had like maybe a year or two hiatus. And then we came back and we got to back to back elite eights with the number one team in the country for a large portion of that season. Brandon Ashley gets his foot hurt. We lose the elite eight back to back years to Wisconsin. And then after that, we never really recovered and got back um, close to that. You know, we choked against Xavier when we should have put that game away in 17 and right. 18. We got routed by freaking Buffalo in, in Boise. And so, now it's it's Tommy's turn. At one of these these next three seasons, I'm going to gather that you're still going to be a top five, top ten team in the country, no matter what. You're going to be playing in a tougher conference, and you should be battle tested by the time you get to the tournament. There should be no excuses. You got to be able to cross that finish line and get to at least a final four, so that way. You can get that monkey off your back, and then you worry about national championships after that. But this team has a lot riding on it this season because they got to prove it. They got to prove it. The program has got to prove it right now. It's yeah. in a prove it moment. It's in a prove it moment, but there won't be a lack of talent or a lack of players that are wanting to uh, come to the U of A, and that is something that other schools wish they had that problem. So we'll leave yes. on that note. Now, yes. Saul, you're going to be on the post game show with me and Mulebach tomorrow. This is correct. Yes, every single tournament game, I will be here. There we go. All right, any other uh, house cleaning uh, items for the boss that you want to get out there? No, I don't got anything. I appreciate your time today, Mike. It's, it's been pretty smooth. I, I love talking high school ball, by the way. So, oh, absolutely. All right, now Jacob Franklin, you're uh, well. You're just uh, you're. Uh, we got some super you. chats too. Oh, and we got a super dude. I tell you about the time we got a super. We had like 250 bucks in super snaps that all came in. We had like we had like three straight. He refuses days. to call it the right thing. Okay. Well, for the longest time, I thought it was, and then it became fun. So I'm like, all right, all right. either. All right, but on that note, Dylan Anderson. Yes, we will talk about Dylan Anderson on another show. You have my word on that. But for the great Saul Bookman, the boss. The uh, precocious Jacob Franklin behind the scene. I am merely <laughs> Mike Luke. You've been listening to the AZ Wildcats podcast. We all silly like the mayor. 